Hi, my name is Flossie. I'm a bi-hemispherical traveller. Living in British Columbia, Canada, in my home-built van, my tiny home on wheels. I'm back in New Zealand right now, travelling the length of the country in a van. And I'm excited to share with you this magical, subtropical country where I was born. New Zealand culture is so rich and alive and it makes me so happy. Can you hold on to me so I know where you are? It's New Zealand's abundance of wide girth trees meant that the Maori could build very large waka or canoes it developed a variety of vessels for coastal and inland waterways. Some were up to 30 meters long and could hold a hundred people. Warriors used them to go to battle and the vessels were considered sacred. Kapahaka is a Maori term for action songs and the groups that perform them. The kapahaka performance involves choral singing, dance, and movements associated with the hand-to-hand -hand combat practiced by Maori in pre-colonial times, presented in a synchronizing of action, timing, posture, and footwork and sound. It was a beautiful display and we were very honored to be part of this. The sound of kapahaka bringing back memory, many memories for me of my early years in New Zealand.
houses would not be as we know them today. All separate huts, sleeping houses, meeting houses, food store houses, and in and outdoor cooking areas. Houses, probably in most villages, were semi-permanent because the occupants moved frequently in search of food and supplies. They had low doors and few if any windows or opening, making them easier to heat. They were often partly below ground level or had her earth heaped up on the outside walls to provide insulation. A small fireplace was used for heating while cooking took place outside or in a separate building. A simple opening near the roof allowed the smoke to escape. Buildings were made with wooden frame covered in reeds such as bulrush, toi toi or nikau palm leaves and sometimes the only other materials such as bark. Earth floor were covered in rough, tough flax mats and the only other furnishings were beds made of finer matting laid over fern leaves. Glow worms! I know you can only see little dots but it's so magical! New Zealand has this magical bioluminous oh, creature called them. a glow worm. Beyond being pretty to look at, to capture their food, the glowworms build a network of silk threads that hang vertically from their habitat, covered in sticky mucus. The insects are drawn to the glowing bioluminescent light, and they fly towards it to the sticky silk maze where they get stuck for the glowworms to eat, similar to how spiders capture their prey in webs. In New Zealand, you can see glowworms in caves. But if you're really lucky and you're out in the forest like we were, you can see them hiding in the forest underneath small cliffs and overhangs tucked away in the trees, making the forest look like a magical glowing wonderland full of mysterious magical beings and I was so happy. We have started up here, gone down here, jetted over here, come down, and from previously in Rotorua, we have now come down to Lake Taupo, which is amazing. And then today. Because Lake Taupo is a volcanic crater, the shores are littered with volcanic rocks, and in specifically, pumice stone, a beautiful source of this very light, full of air bubbles rock, which is often used, you know, treating those nasty bunions and rough feet. They feel very interesting to the touch and are naturally produced by volcanic activity. Taking a break from traveling and going for a walk around the lake was so relaxing and beautiful and we got to witness the large number of birds that make this freshwater lake their home, including several types of cormorant or shag and other species of duck, not usually seen in the northern hemisphere. And if you haven't seen them before, these are black swans. <laughs> 
Go, grab those, have a seat, enjoy. From non-alcoholic through to a hopsy one, a berry one, and a mojito one. Mm. I'm looking forward to this one. New Zealand is a huge producer of honey, specifically from all of its native wildflowers. You may have heard of the manuka tree, which is a type of tea tree. We were lucky to visit a meadery that makes this honey into a delicious, tasty beverage. Hi. Hi. Hi, puppy dog. Oi, 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 oi. Oi, 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 Only I drank beer. Hazy IPA is pretty cool, but unfortunately I don't drink beer. Taupo is a large crater lake in New Zealand's North Island, located in the caldera of the Taupo volcano. The lake has a perimeter of about 193 kilometers, which is 120 miles, the maximum depth of 186 meters, which is 610 feet. It is a noted fishery with stocks of introduced brown and rainbow trout. Numerous geothermal springs on the lake's borders encourage health resorts and are used for generating electricity. We were lucky to go and visit one of the geothermal springs on a river. Lake Taupo is fed by the mighty Waikato River, a river that supplies a lot of New Zealand's hydroelectric power. There are many hot springs in the Rotorua Taupo district, and we were lucky to find one on the edges of the Waikato River before it heads to the Hooker Falls, which will you will see soon in the next episode. But as you can imagine, me and water, specifically if it's a touch on the cold side, I couldn't help but get in and put my head under water. It was an interesting feeling, swimming in the cool, cold, crisp temperatures of the river, and as I slowly swam in, feeling it change, feeling the water warm up, as the warm spring water got less and less diluted closer to its source. Sitting in the warm, delightfully steamy waterfalls was a perfect way to relax and enjoy the laughter or the children enjoying the space too.
accompaniment. A perfect little home on the road. Having a tiny home on wheels has really made this trip exciting and wonderful as this beautiful sunset attests. I can tell you though, it is a not a sponsored thing. We paid to rent this van with our own hard-earned cash. found this place um, on park for night actually and it's uh, a nature reserve and half of its day use area and then half of its uh, kind of like a campground but not really a campground more of a parking lot and on the Google Maps pictures it's like there's nobody there <laughs> we turn up it's full <laughs> and to like squeeze in between a horse trailer that's been converted to a camper and three minivans of Germans and I mean we were just so glad to have somewhere to rest tonight before we have to travel further down the North Island because we've got a, a ferry to catch to get across oh I love the sound of the birds here like oh it's like five in the morning and I'm happy and excited to be traveling and excited that I get sunrises like this. I haven't yet found a beautiful sunset. I'm still keeping my eye out for a beautiful sunset, but it's because we've had such rainy, miserable weather. There's not really been any sunsets. I mean, the temperature has been nice and warm and humid, but it's been very rainy. So I think from the now on for the rest of the week, for the rest of the time hopefully we're gonna have beautiful hot sunny weather it's kind of a blessing actually because if you didn't know this about New Zealand New Zealand has one of the most vicious Sun you've ever experienced because there is a hole in the ozone layer the ozone layer hole has been getting smaller um, because of the efforts of the world to not use so many I don't know if it's what what if it's aerosols or something I don't know I'll put it on the screen below um, but the burn time here for Sun is very short um, and it doesn't even have to feel hot or be uh, a clear day for you to get really sunburned you can get sunburned on a cloudy overcast day so it's been warm and muggy and I think I've still got a little bit of a I'm getting some color in my skin <laughs> from being outside but look at the sunrise from here the next steps are to go further south we're going to the central plateau where the uh, land rises it turns to tussock grass our volcanic mountains will be there and then heading further down towards Wellington and Wellington is where the ferry is to cross from the North Island to the South Island Anyway, I'm buzzing. It's great. It's early in the morning. <laughs> I'm very happy to be back here. So, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. 
Thanks so much for joining me for the third episode of this New Zealand Southern Hemisphere adventure. I hope you can continue watching with me and if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and give it a big thumbs up only if you enjoyed it. It's not mandatory, but it does help out a lot. A huge thank you to my Patreons who have been so encouraging. I hope you have received your postcards that I've sent you from New Zealand. If not, they'll be in the mail soon. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all next week. Bye!